Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of our Interstellar Space Genesis Alpha Let's Play. We're playing as the Sulak. When we last left off, we had just colonized Rulduk 2, which is a, a pretty good find for us. It's the equivalent of our homeworld, so it's going to be a great uh, colony for us throughout the entire game. So I'm really glad that we found that so close by. Um, we, As part of finding that, we did colonize it, and I didn't cover this in the last session, but we've actually increased our supply range now. If you see our uh, large purplish circle here, it has increased in size, meaning that we can now reach these other stars that uh, were previously unavailable to us. One way that you can adjust your supply range or see your supply range is to actually click on this button right here. It's on by default. That's going to show your supply range or turn it off. Um, there are several ways to increase your supply range. One, of course, is to create a new colony like we just did. Outposts will also extend your supply range. Outposts again are used for asteroid exploitations and exploitation of strategic resources. You can also just build an outpost on any uh, in any system on any planet just to extend your supply range. There are also several technologies that allow you to travel further which will increase your supply range. But this lower left area here I didn't cover it in the last session but it essentially is a bunch of things that will turn on um, UI elements for you like your borders of your empire your sensor range so we can only detect ships currently within these sensor ranges we won't really have much information about anything outside of those our supply range of course which is turned on by default uh, exploitations which currently there are none going on uh, scan levels this will show you a little magnifying glass and it'll allow you to hover over it and see what scan level you're at so uh, currently we are at a basic scan level pretty much everywhere except for our home system which you started advanced on and over here in uh, Kaba, we also have advanced, and we are working, I uh, believe, right now on increasing our knowledge of Optala because there are several lava worlds we want to know more about there. There is this uh, strategic resource detection um, UI element, so if we had detected any of these four strategic resources up here, those would appear on the map to give us an easy way to see those. And there's also an outpost, uh, sorry, colonies. Um, this will show us any systems that have colonizable planets, so we can see over here that there is a colonizable planet for us because we have the technology to colonize this Weemdis-1. Of course, it's heavy G, so uh, we would suffer 50% penalties to production and pop growth there, so I'm not too anxious to grab that one right now, but that's good to know. The final UI element here is actually a star distance measuring tool. It'll tell you how far away two stars are from one another. So we could click here and click, uh, basically then just move our mouse around. It'll tell us these are seven parsecs away. Uh, that's important to know for speed of your ships, how many parsecs they can travel per turn. There's also a space culture that gives you bonus morale if you're the further away you are from the homeworld. So it's important for that purpose as well. And then this right here, uh, directly to the right of that, this is actually your zoom level. So you can see we're right at the middle. If I move my mouse wheel uh, back from here, uh, let's see here. I can zoom out like that, and we can zoom all the way out and see pretty much the whole galaxy. I can zoom in one level, I can zoom in again. Um, at this point I can't zoom in any further. Oh, actually I can. I gotta be you gotta have your mouse in a uh, playable space. If you've one thing to note is if you have your mouse on the outer side of the screen that's not really a playable area, it's not gonna move the zoom level. So you gotta have it in the actual playable space for the zoom to go. But we can't zoom in any further than this level and because that level is basically the equivalent of being in the colony. So that's when you're fully zoomed in. Uh, just something to keep in mind. So that covers all those. So let's go ahead and move our frigates out of where they're stationed right now. Now that we have new opportunities of places to explore, maybe we'll go here. And one thing to note here, it does say we're moving slower because of a nebula. So right here, this is a nebula. Um, if you hover over it on the map, you will see that it is a nebula and what the uh, effects it has on your ships are. Uh, in this case, we're going to move slower and certain equipment will be affected during battle. And there is also a nebula here. I'm trying to see if we have any dark. Yeah, over here would be an example of a dark nebula. You can act, actually can't move through these at all unless you have a certain technology. So those will form a natural border where no one can come at you from that direction, basically. All right, with those set and everything set over here, I believe we're good to go for a couple of turns here and see what happens. 
we'll have our technology here shortly. Oh, we've made some discoveries. So it looks like our remote exploration has just revealed a white dwarf up here. So uh, I mentioned to you guys earlier that we would be able to find systems that didn't exist currently in this space, and sure enough, we found one. What's in here? There is a acid large, ultra rich medium G here. I'm quite anxious to get on that one, even though it is a medium G and we will suffer a little bit of a penalty. Ultra rich is eight production per population unit. We don't know if there's any specials here, positive or negative. That's the only gamble with that. But there's also a lava low G here. And lava is something that we'll be able to colonize here in just a moment. We're going to get that technology. It's sufficient. So again, it's another good choice, although not as good as this acid one, to be honest. And there are also these ruins here. Which, which system are those on? So ruins are right here. Any colony on this uh, planet where these ruins are located is going to get plus 10 space culture points from colony on this planet. So you can see we're getting 12 space culture points a turn right now. So finding and colonizing a place with ruins early in the game is going to really substantially increase uh, how quickly we get our initial space culture. And the other thing with ruins is once we have a ship over here, we'll be able to explore it. If we bring a ship with a survey ship uh, or an explorer leader or both, we're going to get even better uh, odds of finding something cool here. So we may want to wait on exploring that until later on. You can see it also tells us that we found a brown dwarf up in sector 03. Again, the sector numbers are shown when you have the remote uh, exploration window open. So you can see 03 right here. That's where that is. And it'll also highlight on the map in, with green. Uh, outline. But the reason we found that is because there is a wormhole here that is going over there. It's open right now. The stability of it is unknown. We don't have a full scan right now, just advanced, so we don't know entirely. But there is a wormhole that would potentially allow instant travel over there. We don't have any other information about that right now. Here's the ruins. Basically, we're just getting all these alerts about the different things we found. So we could continue to drill in here and see what else we might find. Not a terrible idea. Um, I may want to do that if we're going to send a colony ship here shortly and see what's there, just to get full knowledge of it. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I think I think let's go ahead and do that. We'll have uh, our other remote exploration do something else here in a little bit. Okay, that was a good find. Very good. All right, we now have the capability to colonize lava worlds, and a leader is approaching. We'll address that in just a minute. I actually want to go into our research and mix up, uh, switch something up here real quick. Instead of the subsurface vault, I'm going to get off-world support. Off-world support actually will give us a support ship right from the get-go. As soon as we get it, you get a free one. And they take quite a long time to build normally, at least at the beginning of the game. So I want to get that free one out and start helping my other colonies get started. So I'm going to switch to do that one first and then this. Uh, earlier I'd mentioned technologies you could use to move further out, so if in the event that we had nothing nearby that was useful for us, thankfully we, that's not the case for us. But if you run into that situation, you could research improved logistics, and it'll allow you to move up to seven parsecs away from the settlement instead of five parsecs. Alright, let's see who the leader that's approached here. We've got a colony leader, Sierra Thol Tholos, Mary. It says here, uh, Sierra is a youthful up-and-coming Nova administrator. Let's see if Sierra is somebody that we would want to hire. I'll read the descriptions of anybody I hire. That's the that's the rule I'll, I'll follow. That way we're not reading too many things unnecessarily. So her starting stats are pretty low. We're just at 0 and 1 on these things. Administration, every point in administration is going to give you an extra 0 0.5 tax revenue per pop. Every point in labor is going to give you 0 0.5 production per pop. We're going to get 0 uh, research points per pop unit in the system here, so 0 0.5 per point in research, we have 0, so. And then corporate skill, plus 10% bonus to production and trade asteroid exploitation, so if we start exploiting a lot of asteroids, corporate's a good one to have. And warfare gives you bonus ground combat strength in the colony, which is something we already know we're pretty good at. So those are the primary stats. Every leader is going to have those. Every colony leader is going to have these, and ship leaders will have a different set, but they will also have the same number. Um, there's a, I'll come back to this four in a second to explain what that is, but here we've got some unique traits here. These kind of are character-specific, different things that they've developed, personality quirks, things like that, whereas over here in this area we're looking more at skills and abilities that give them bonuses. So let's take a look here. So Sierra has the visionary trait. They excel at, uh, She excels at thinking about it or planning for the future with imagination and wisdom. 
It gives a bonus to space culture generation and the colonies they manage. So plus one SCP per pop and colony. So additional, um, you know, another way to get space culture. There's also the activist secondary skill, which gives plus 20 flat SCP generation per turn. So again, we're making 12 right now. So just like that 10 I was talking about. Plus 20 flat would be huge now at the towards the end of the game. Probably not so much. And then here we've got a PSYOP skill. This has influence leader missions to reduce rival leader's opinion. And we'll get into an opinion in just a second to explain what this means. And leader could defect if opinion drops below minus 10. And has a 50% chance of framing another empire for the spy job. So there's definitely an... S the espionage in this game and the leaders themselves, they're more than just... I, I like to refer to them as stats on a stick, where they basically are just a set of stats. They're bonuses that you get and you have them and they're nice and everything but the leader other than that they're just a face with a name and they have no thematic place in your galaxy they're just a another tool basically in this game they are still that but there's a little bit more to them they will make requests and demands of you they have some opinion of you but it be it good or bad and here in this case we're starting with an opinion of four this tooltip is going to walk you through exactly what you're looking for here. You get minus one opinion per turn if they're unassigned. That's true for colony and ship leaders, so you don't want to hire them and not have something for them to do. They don't like being, um, for whatever reason, they don't like being paid to do nothing. Uh, perhaps that's not thematic. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, they uh, will gain plus one opinion every ten turns if they are assigned. So, And there's a trusting trait that would actually... Uh, appear down here where this visionary trait is, it'd be another one along this line. If they have the trusting trait, they actually gain it um, faster. They also gain, so what is the effect of the opinion? The lower the opinion is, the less experience they get, whereas the more positive their opinion of you, the faster they get experience, so the faster they're going to level up. And the desires that they have on you, uh, that they ask of you, as you meet them, you will increase their opinion of you, and if you choose not to meet them, you will reduce their opinion of you. And of course, if you go to a negative 10, you saw that, or even in, I've seen even at negative 5 where I've been given a demand that I basically need to give them a raise to keep them around because they're so unhappy, otherwise they're going to leave. Now, this is not that hard to manage. It might be initially if you're not careful, but once you learn the game's ins and out, it's, it's pretty easy to keep these people in line. And you'll find that later on, they'll be making demands and you'll just, if it's not feasible for you, it's just not worth it, you'll, you'll deny it. And their opinion will be so high that you won't worry about it. As long as you've got it in the positive, uh, you know, the most you might lose from a negative event might be negative 20. But at that point, you might have an opinion of 48 or 50, and you're just not going to really care too much about that. So in any case, Sierra costs 60 BC and 3 BC a turn. As you can see, we have three right now with no money. If I had taken a different approach at the beginning of the game and built up money, I'd be prepared to holler, hire a leader now instead. But, you know... These bonuses are not that great right now, and we'll have plenty of great leaders come up later. So I'm just going to reject. Now let's say we wanted to hire Sierra. We just decided immediately that we made a mistake, or maybe we want to check in a few turns. Up here is where the leaders are, and if you click in here, they will still be available to hire. This 20 here indicates that they have 20 turns before you uh, won't be able to hire them. And you'll also get a warning pop-up uh, over here on the right side that will indicate that you need to hire them now or they're going to leave you. We can also see that Sierra can do spy missions because she has one of the secondary skills that allows spy missions. So maybe we'll come back to that if we start making some money, but right now uh, that's not what I'm focused on. All right, let's go ahead and see where we're at. We are researching the support ship. We're going to get a new space culture in two turns, and we're going to actually go for that free colony ship now that we know there's stuff worth colonizing. We've got the Martok system up here, Martok uh, 1, 2, and 3, small asteroid belt, medium G lava, so not terrible, a barren, uh, that's no use to us, but uh, that lava world is probably pretty low priority for us right now, just based on some of the other better stuff we found. And here we've got two gas giants, so potentially a source of some helium-3 that we might take advantage of. I'm going to go ahead and move these guys. I'll move that one here, I'll just leave this one here. Hit next turn. Here's our space culture level up. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And we would have an option now to continue down the knowledge path, as you can see here. We would pick either asteroid archaeology, which is plus 10 research points per asteroid research exploitation. So if we were exploiting asteroids, we could get more research points. And again, plus 10 each. Early on the game is a lot. Later in the game is not so much. 
That's why this is kind of an early tier knowledge pick. And this one allows you plus 50% remote exploration speed. So if you want to get those uh, remote explorations and find those really cool things out about those systems and find hidden systems really fast, we might pick Cosmic Wisdom here right away. But I really need a colony ship right now, so I'm, I'm going to go with this one. But just pay, keep in mind up here, we are basically making a long-term choice here because it's going to be 26 turns unless we increase our uh, space culture per turn before we get another choice. But we already know that the colony we want to uh, colonize this time has ruins on it. They're going to give us plus 10, so we actually are going to be um, getting it in less than 26 turns for sure. You will notice uh, that we had plus 3. Now we are down to plus 2 because that colony ship is taking one, as we can see from here. One from colony ship, now that we have one. We're still positive, so again, not a problem. And we've got an event that a colony ship is completed. This is the same event you'll get if you build new ships. So whether you get them free from that or you build them, uh, that's taking us into the colony as if we built it, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and exit out of that. And I'm going to send this one up to Shaloth to this place. Again, medium G, not ideal, but based on the presence of that ruin and the size of the world, I'm definitely interested in it. We've got more scanning information here. Still don't know enough about those gas giants because at advanced we just don't have that information. And here we get a little more, more information here. There's a medium G rich lava eco 2 down here, but there's also a monster, so that's the problem with that area. Let's go ahead and continue here, and I'm actually going to go, um, what was it that I wanted to go into? I actually want to find out about these gas giants over here, I believe, now. Let's go with that, and these two choices. Oh, we found another crystal entity. Let's go ahead and flee away from this. They're giving us all the tough space monsters early on here, apparently. We're going to get out of here. Okay, we've had a population growth increase in Gladys. We've also uh, got a fleet report here of some scanning information. So there's an Acid Heavy G here with a space monster in it. I could again change where I flee to, but in this case I don't care. There's nowhere else within our supply range that I want to go to right now. I'll close out those two events. We have the population growth here. So we could come in here and if we wanted to make any changes to anything, we could. I might consider going away from trade goods now that we pretty much have most of the techs we want. We could go instead for infrastructure. I think I'm going to go ahead and start increasing the infrastructure here. All right, made it into Shaloth. Let's see if our... Uh, Plus 13 goes up when we colonize this world. Indeed it did. Went up to plus 26. So we got plus 10 from the ancient ruins. We also got some just from having infrastructure, it, believe, it looks like, and the population as well. Now you'll see this little weight icon on the Sulak here. This is indicating that we are not in an ideal gravity situation. We are getting a penalty for that. The, uh, let's see. We're going to get a minus 4.58 from planet gravity here. You see that listed in the top section. You'll also see minus 4 from gravity in production here. So that's the 25% penalty that we're facing. And then also you may have noticed the infrastructure is 8 here because a large world has a more capacity for more infrastructure and more buildings and such. And we're also at 2 out of 24 here. So we're getting 16 from having a large world and another 8 from subterranean. So that's very nice. We could go ahead. I think I'm just going to go ahead with uh, Robotic Factory is 15 turns. And Infrastructure. Let's go with Robotic Factory. There are powerful creatures here. So we, unlike the, this planet, which we still don't know about because we don't have a full scan level, the special could be here, could not be. Uh, when you do colonize, you will find out if they're special there. And we found powerful creatures, which in this case is a good one. It's ancient and powerful creatures inhabit this planet. Once tamed, these will prove to be mighty allies in supporting our ground troops in battle. So plus 100% ground combat strength on the planet. 
that is excellent and if we go into that planet we will see that reflected here we're getting plus two from the planet special so it's basically just doubling what we have all right excellent we've got several events over here part of that colonization so here's where it's telling us that we found powerful creatures here's where it's telling us we've established a colony here is the initial infrastructure specialization we need to pick for this colony so based on the size of this we're going to get eight of these so that's quite a lot we probably won't need extra buildings for instance here but we might want to consider getting planetary engineering just to try to unlock the bonus that we can get to that everywhere and improve our eco engineering capabilities because I don't think I need ships and such right now we will be going for ships in the long run um, but we could get these three first and then focus on these I think that's what we'll do All right, and we got a colonization event. So this is uh, something that can happen. You get some random events in this game. You remember I had those turned on when we started. You will get them sometimes just throughout the game, uh, just while you're doing things. You might get events from exploring ruins, and you also can get events from e colonizing uh, new places. So we didn't get one the first time we colonized, but we got one this time. Let's take a look at it. Secret Entrepreneur. Uh, Emperor, upon founding our colony at Shaloth One. We have learned that this colonization was the pet project of an influential individual in our empire. This entrepreneur wishes to remain private, but they worked behind the scenes to load the colony ship with extra supplies and machinery, which are now at Shaloth One's disposal. What should we do? Well, that was mighty kind of them, wasn't it? We get a choice here. We can get a robotic factory added right away. We can get an infrastructure level added right away. Or we can get extra money and a colony governor, potentially hiring a, uh, that governor with that 100 BC. We are running a little bit of a deficit right now. So that's something to consider. Maybe we should get the person. But the robotic factory would give us a quick head start here. So I actually am going to go for the robotic factory in this case. So we're going to use the extra supplies to create a robotic factory for the colony and quietly put the donor's name on a plaque by the entrance. And that's, I think that's an appropriate uh, recognition of their efforts. Our, of course, our money has gone down further because of that. So we are going to have to reduce this down. And we're going to have to be really careful with our money now because we're running very close to the limit. So no need to build a robotic factory anymore here because we've got one. Go ahead and take that out of the queue. Probably should remove automatically. I'll, uh, I'll make a note to let the devs know about that. And now we can get infrastructure in four turns. So we're just going to work on infrastructure. And again, all those multipliers are going to start coming into effect as we grow things out here. So that was a very nice event for us. Most of the time, random events are beneficial to the player. There are times where they will be negative but um, more often than not they are beneficial to the player uh, we have to also set a construction here I'm gonna set trade goods even though we're not putting any effort into those we're doing zero but just so it doesn't have none and uh, have little pop-ups you can also see right here that at a glance that this place has ruins and powerful creatures okay and if we wanted to colonize more worlds I'll just cover that right now uh, up in this overview panel there's all kinds of stuff you can do we can sort from A to Z we can sort by the production capacity of our colonies we can sort by the infrastructure level how much research they're producing all these different things that we can sort by to get a quick look you know any way you want to see your colonies uh, you can basically sort them that way we've got explored planets here this is all the places that we know about right now and when you hover over them it's gonna tell you exactly where they are So that's very helpful the green check mark here will indicate whether or not you currently have the technology to explore there. There's a little monster icon here if there's a monster there that you want to be aware of so you're not sending colony ships to their doom. And there's a sort system here as well. We can sort by planet type. We can sort by ecological level, size, mineral richness. So we've got a tiny barren ultra rich here but that's useless. Uh, habitability. So obviously it's going to put our most ideal stuff first ruins richness again so there's just all kinds of filters here's asteroid belts it'll tell us where the asteroid belts are here are strategic resources or potential strategic resources so all these gas giants currently there's a question mark they may or may not have helium-3 it's definitely a risk to set up an outpost on a place before you've determined if there's helium-3 there because you might get nothing out of it and outpost ships at the start of the game are difficult to come by here's, a, here's where our fleets are in the system and here is all of our ships in general. So that's how all of that works. All right, uh, so we're, I think right now we're waiting for our support ship and we are building infrastructure here and just making money there and robotic factory there. So I think we are okay for right now. Go 
going to continue to explore. You'll see that we colonized that world, so we opened up a few more stars, and there's a lot of empty space here. I would bet there's something there for us. Another wormhole. Uh, the wormhole in Shaloth is unstable, so that means this one will close over a period of time. We can see that there it's expected to close in 44 turns. So after that point, we won't have to worry about anyone traveling into our system from there. When we've got the full scanning information, we can see here that this one, the special question mark is gone. We now know there's nothing there. And we got some basic information up here on Kluwegi. We've got another acid, medium G. Uh, it's an ideal world for us, so that's quite nice. As we've lucked out. Uh, last game I played was on Hardcore, which gives you a tougher start. I did not have this many great worlds nearby, which uh, for the Moltar at least was not that difficult to overcome, but thankfully as the Sulak we don't have that capability, so I'm glad that we're getting uh, some more areas that are going to be easier for us to expand to. Don't know that I care too much about many of these other places. This is where this stuff can come in handy. We're going to definitely find out what's in... We don't care about that one too much because it's got a monster in it, right? No, Optala does not have a monster. Okay. So let's go ahead and get more information on Tala so we can find out if we are going to be exploiting any Helium-3 this game. Oh, I should have moved this frigate last time. Shaloth 1 has expanded our infrastructure. You can see we're getting infrastructure at a very quick pace right now. So I'm just going to keep going down that line. That robotic factory is giving us 30 here because of ultra-rich. So robotic factory on an ultra-rich world. Very, very nice. Let's increase the eco-engineering again. You'll see here that the even without going all the way down, this planetary engineering has, actually has an empire-wide effect in a, in a sense where it increases your support ships no matter where they are. So... This will be nice when we get our support ship if we want to do any planetary engineering with it. Off-world support. Okay, we've got our off-world support. We've got a support ship. That is taking three, but we are up now up to seven because of our infrastructure. So we are still staying ahead of that. Something to keep in mind, like I said. Here's our free support ship. It's here at our capital. I think I'm going to send it over to Rulebook 2. It needs the most help right now. We got some scanning information here. There's another Gauss giant. But nothing else. There's a tiny acid medium G. Not really anything we want. These are outside of our range. So I'm just going to leave my frigate there. A wormhole. To an unknown location. We don't know where it is currently. We'll need more information, it seems like. A full scan will reveal the stable unstable status, and an advanced scan will display the open closed status. So it would probably be useful to know. So we will probably start scanning there shortly to find out more about that because we want to know if any enemies are going to be able to potentially come in through that avenue. Okay, we're just going to click end turn here a couple times. We're almost up to our next space culture, which is excellent. All right, we've got advanced here, but still not full, so we still can't see this information. It tells us there we need to continue exploring it, so we're going to go ahead and follow its advice. Infrastructure again. I'm going to get the final level on this because I want that. Uh, it goes from 50% to 100%, so you definitely 25, 50, 100, so the third point is the most valuable, right? We're getting 50% out of it. Go ahead with that. Infrastructure is taking longer and longer here. We're at 12 turns, but I think I'm still just going to keep on that. The nice thing about infrastructure is it doesn't, unlike buildings, which cost us more money, infrastructure we can build up without costing us more money. And we are broke right now. One thing we might consider is scrapping one of these frigates to get some money. You can get some nice money off of them earlier in the game. So I'm actually going to send this back to, I believe we could do it to any of our colonies, but I'm sending it back to our capital in preparation for possibly scrapping one of these. Doesn't look like we've got any enemies too, too close by, and these are not going to be strong enough to take on these crystalline entities, so. All right, we've completed our robotic factory. 
So we are positive money right now. What is going on? Where are we getting money from? It looks like from production taxes. Okay, so that's good. We are in the positive now. All right, let's take a look. With that done, we may want to consider doing infrastructure here now and getting that up. We've got a space culture level up. You can see here our abilities are still not active because we haven't found anyone. So we can't start ramping up our population growth just yet. All right, so now we've gotten our initial choices out of the way. So let's take a look at what our options are now. We've got level two adventure options, level two knowledge options, and of course the level one wealth options that we haven't gone through yet. Frontier Spirit, plus 1% morale per parsec away from capital. So this is the one I talked about where the further away your colonies are from the capital, the more morale they get. I covered uh, quite extensively, I think, in the first uh, episode what how good morale is. It's very good. But right now we're kind of clustered close to our capital, so the benefits would be minimal. A survey ship. Survey ship, uh, for the most part, it, like I said earlier, it helps with ruins exploration. It makes it more likely for you to find stuff. But the other purpose of a survey ship is it'll kind of achieve what we're doing with remote exploration, but much faster. You just fly the survey ship and you can get a really good scan of that system without having to wait eight, you know, four, six, eight turns. So we're quite good for that. But we've already got the astron uh, astronomy culture to get two going at once, and I feel like we're getting them in a good clip right now, so I don't think we'd want that one. So neither one of these right now is that attractive. We might look and see what's next, which is income from tourism and taxes. We don't have any tourism generating things yet. When we counter those, I'll cover them. So I think the adventure path is we want to get off that uh, path right now. We've still got overmining for plus one production per pop. Not bad, but of course our ultra-rich world is giving us plus eight already. So one additional of that is not that much. Two free outpost ships. I'm kind of inclined to pick this just because we know we're going to probably be getting some helium-3 here soon. And there's a good tech that gives us more production out of that. So that's a good option. And then we've got the asteroid exploitation and the remote exploration speed. Um, I'm I'm really thinking I want to go with the outpost ships. We've got enough ship support points to maintain them, even if we don't use them right away. So I'm going to go with that one. You can see we still got positive one, so I'm okay with that. We're going to let them sit here until we finish our remote exploration. Just want to look through here and make sure we're not wasting any time on anything. We're going to get a infrastructure, infrastructure, and infrastructure. Okay, it looks like we're building up quite nicely. All right, and we've discovered helium-3. That's what all these things are telling us here. How much did we find? Plus one here and empty. Not as not as good as I would have hoped, but again, that's why you need to do it, because if you, if I had randomly picked an outpost here instead of here, I'd be, uh, I'd be wasting an outpost ship completely. Looks like we also found one down here, so plus one. Sometimes you can find plus two. Obviously, those are the uh, primo places we would want to get. And this one's covered by a monster right now. All right. So uh, I'll get to this in just a second. Let's go for our infrastructure specialization here in Gladys 1. This is our home world. Let's go ahead and get, let's just continue down this and get the ship construction flat bonus. Uh, let's see, we're at three. We could get two. Um, right now, I think I'm just going to build up money for a little bit and. You know, we won't have to scrap that ship right away. Let's just get a little bit of money. We might put a little bit of that into... Well, how, much, how much longer do we have in that colony leader? Five turns. I could probably get... Yeah, we could get enough in five turns to hire Sierra. So I think we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, Helium-3 strategic resource has been revealed. So we're going to get a choice here. Every time you find one of these strategic resources, you get a choice. And it's a one or the other you get to unlock. So let's take a look. Helium-3 Research Decision Nature provides many tools and clues for our survival in the cosmos. It is up to us to recognize and exploit those tools and be prepared. So every one of these is going to have a nice little quote here. What technology path shall we choose? Text will be added to the tech tree and I'll show you where those show up. So we've got industrial which is going to be um, more of our uh, production and economy focused and then we've got militarized so let's take a look. We get all three of these from whichever one we choose. Fusion production is 0.5 production per pop unit in Empire per source of Helium-3. So obviously if it's a, a single source of one on a gas giant, we're going to get half a 
half a point of production per pop unit. If it's plus two, then we would get plus one. And if we have a lot of them, then we would get uh, both. Plus 10 population growth. Well, that's attractive to me per source, so we could get quite a bit from that. And then you've got commerce, so which is extra revenue from trade treaties per source of helium-3. Here we have fusion drive. So it's a better drive than our default one. It makes it allows us to move faster. And you have to have at least one source of helium-3. And it also tells you here, all ship drives are automatically upgraded when this technology is discovered. So you don't have to go around and update all your ships and ship designs. That'll happen automatically. Even the ones I believe that are flying out there will get the new ship drive. So you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty easy to use. We've got beam acceleration. This is plus 10% beam damage per source of helium-3. That can be quite good if we're going to focus on beams, which we, we could consider doing. And then we've got enhanced shields, plus 10% shield strength per source of helium-3. So definitely if you're going war-focused or you're in wars early, you'd want this one for sure. Otherwise, you know, right now we could really pick either one. I'm going to go with industrial fusion, mostly to feed into our thematic element of this Let's Play, where we're looking to grow our population out of control. Hopefully find as many huge worlds as we can, so I'm going to pick this one. And again, the militarized fusion will never be around now. If we go ahead and look in the research tree, you see these new choices have appeared in here where they weren't before, and they have this little icon. This icon is a Helium-3 icon to indicate that our choices in Helium-3 have unlocked this tech. Uh, we would get the same thing for any minor, neutronium or dark matter. So that means I want to start getting down this path to get these. So what I'll probably pick here is one of these options and start building that way. So we want culture. I think I'm going to get economic capital because we know money is something that we need right now and then we'll pick something from the second group. All right, let's go ahead and continue scanning. Is there another place with gas giants that we have not scanned yet? Looks like we have several, none that have double up so we can't get... We'll go with Rohini here. Let me switch that back. So I think we are good right now. Alright, we have found someone. And you'll see we got a whole bunch of stuff because we've unlocked our abilities now. We found the Moltar Union. We found a brown dwarf. And we've made contact with the Moltar. Hello, Emperor Zippo. I am I bear greetings from Sidima prime of the admirable Moltar race. How may our empire serve you? I don't really want anything from you guys right now. Thank you very much. Alright, we've got the two abilities. I'm just going to right click those. We've got another leader that's showed up. Zeroff the Venturous. actually had Zeroff in my last Let's Play series. He's quite, quite good because he has the uh, Explorer secondary skill which gives you plus 10% chance to find something in ruins and better outcome of searching ruins. If you can get somebody up to an expert level, you can actually go back and search ruins that you've already searched once a second time, which uh, obviously if you found six or seven ruins, you that's a lot of potential extra credits and ships and all kinds of other things you can find. He gets plus one initiative on level up, so whenever you up, update initiative, you'll get an uh, additional point. So I will just pull his story up again. If I hire him, I'll go ahead and read it out loud, but I'm just going to hold this here for a second in case you want to pause and read it yourself. Here's leader desires, so he has no desires. We haven't hired him. He wouldn't have any for sure until we hired him. His opinion starts at two, so pretty low, but it can be built up. So unlike uh, colony leaders, ship leaders have their own set of uh, stuff here. And in this case, command skill, as it shows here, will show you what level of ships he can command. So at a command level of two, he can command ships up to the destroyer class. And if you look at the command skill chart at the bottom, you'll see it, it makes it very easy to break down what skill level unlocks what. So at 2, we got Destroyer. If we go to 3, it says Destroyer Plus, and it tells us right above that the Plus indicates we'll get bonus experience. So if he's flying a Destroyer and he's uh, Command Skill 3, he's going to get bonus experience every time he fights a battle or searches ruins in it. So ideally, you want to have him in the ship that they get a bonus experience in. We get Operations. This adds to your ship support points. The more points you have here, basically, you get more points up here. So it's another way, in addition to the city uh, infrastructure in the colony, to increase that. Attack is going to give plus 10% ship attack to all ships in fleet. So we've got 10% uh, 10 per point, basically, and we've got one, so that's 
And one thing to note down here is the effects are applied only if the leader has the atti highest attack skill in the fleet. So very important to remember that. It affects all ships in the fleet. So your best ship attack leader in the fleet adds his bonus to all ships in the fleet. If you've got multiple ship leaders taking place in the same battle on your side, you've got multi uh, them piloting multiple ships, only one of them is going to apply their ship attack, whoever is the highest. Uh, defense works the same way. So it's the opposite of attack is ship defense, obviously. It's how often you get hit in combat, your chance to be hit. And again, it applies to the highest in the fleet. So you could have a really high attack leader in a fleet uh, combined with a really high defense leader in the fleet to kind of cover both bases if you wanted. Initiative also applies only to the highest of the leaders in the fleet, and it is how much initiative you have in battle, so it effectively determines who goes first each round. Because in this game, in combat, you move all your ships, and then the enemy moves all their ships, or vice versa. It's not like individual ship initiative, it's the whole fleet. Alright, he's 104 BC a turn. I don't have that kind of money right now, and I think I'm going to get the colony leader first. Infrastructure upgrade on Ruldook 2. Looks like we were going down the building construction path here. We could continue down that, or we could grab planetary engineering here. Or ships. This place is sufficient mineral richness. We know we're going to want to focus ships mostly in the other one. We may do ships here as well. Let's think about this. I think I want to go down here and get less maintenance from buildings right now. So let's just pick that. Uh, and next infrastructure level is only four, so let's just continue down there for that. We're going to get a new research tech here in just a moment. All right, subsurface vault. I'll be putting this pretty much everywhere to get extra building capacity. It's going to take one building slot, but we're not really short on building slots right now, so that's okay. Let's get the vault. Um, actually, I'm going to wait on that in this colony because I need the money right now. Here at Shaloth, we will go ahead and put the vault in. Should we build it now? Let's go ahead and build it. Let's see, we can move this up and still have it in three turns. Let's do that. And Ruldook could build the vault here, but I'm going to wait a little bit on it. I'll just put it in there as a reminder. Okay, and what are we researching next? Economic capital. That's a good one. And how long do we have on Sierra? Three more turns. Right, we've got a pop gro growth in Gladys 1. So we're up to 8 now. Excellent. It's letting us know here, here's that warning that she's going to leave. Do we want to hire her? And yes, I do think I want to hire her. For now, we'll put her on the colony, but we may use her for espionage later on. Yes, we do want to hire you. And now we have to assign her. There's several ways we can do that. We can click here and assign her to one of these systems. So that's one way to do it. We would pick basically whichever one we want from here. We could also go directly to the colony. So we could go here and click on leaders and it'll bring up the same menu. And we can do that from here. You are still going to have to pick the colony though. It doesn't automatically choose the one you're on. So either way that you choose to do it will work fine. Uh, again, the leader panel here. We go here and we'll pick our home world. That's where I want to put her for now. You can see it's going to take five turns. It's not an instant assignment, so we won't get the benefits from her for five turns. And that's also shown here, EGA five turns. Remote exploration has found nothing in that sector. Okay, let's go ahead and continue looking at that. Uh, we did have, I believe we had a strategic resource somewhere that we probably should be grabbing, right? I think I missed that. Yeah, we'll send one here and go ahead and get that established. We don't have any text to use it yet. But at least we'll have it done, and I'll show you how the outpost system works. Okay, we completed the subsurface vault here on Shaloth 1. I th am thinking we might want to go with the pop growth here in just a moment, but maybe we should get the med bay facility or a cloning facility first, which is plus 50% pop growth in colony. So we will use lust, but I'm going to hold off just a little bit longer on that. So let's go ahead and keep increasing infrastructure so we have the building space for it. 
Uh, we've got uh, the final one here where we can get the legendary civil, civil engineers. Okay. Infrastructure starting to take a long time, so let's go ahead and get that subsurface vault. And maybe we will just a little bit towards pop growth like that. Here on Gladys 1, we are still getting money. So we'll go ahead and collect money there for a little bit longer. All right, subsurface vault completed in Colony Rolduck 2. Excellent. So we have completed that now. Uh, at this point, I think we want more citizens. Let's go all the way to the left, which is going to give us the most from, uh, again, that's because of habitat control. You can see we're getting plus 623% population growth. If I go here, we're at 341%. And that's based on total planetary engineering production. You can see we're getting 50 from the support ship, 21 from Empire Infrastructure, and 85 from base production. So that's one of the reasons we're getting so much. And then there's a formula there that tells you kind of where that percentage is coming from. I won't bore you by checking, double checking the math right now, but if you see anything off there, let me know. Oh wow, look at here, plus two in both. I should probably redirect my outpost ship out over there now. Both of them actually. I was just about to do that, so we found out about that just in time. But that's four, which is going to translate to 40 percent pop growth and plus two production per pop across our entire empire so I definitely I'm gonna do that what do we want to know about um, let's just go over here I don't have any priorities for that right now let's go one more turn there's our economic capital so the economic capital needs to be built somewhere and wouldn't be a terrible idea to just throw that here I think yeah let's just go ahead and throw that there in that world alright we want the the med bay is also very good but I actually want the cloning facility first because we want to go heavy pop growth I would love it if we could get this faster than that amount of time, but not while we're building. If we put trade goods here, how fast can we get this? We could go negative a little bit for a period of time to get it faster. I think I'm going to actually drain from my coffers a little bit to get that faster. And then here we're still doing pop growth and here we are doing infrastructure okay our outpost ships are slowly making their way over there through that nebula we've got a pop growth increase here the next one's in 10 turns we'll just continue down that uh, I think uh, nine maybe we should all right we'll go infrastructure for now we've got another leader that's approached this is uh, Lord Mass Josh the Wanderer. I'll hover over his uh, description if you'd like to read it. We've got um, another ship leader here, so I went over all these already. We get a, a pretty good idea of what they are. He's able to command destroyers already with some attack and defense, addition initiative. We've got some traits over here we haven't seen yet. Lone Wolf, minus one attack, minus one defense, and minus one initiative per additional leader in the same fleet. So. This wanderer does not like working with others. Fickle, fickle is a uh, opposite of trusting. It basically means that they uh, gain their opinion every 20 turns, one opinion instead of every 10, and it decreases by two every turn. The leaders on the side instead of one, and they threaten to leave when the opinion is minus five or less. So I thought that was all leaders, but apparently it's just fickle ones. I've had that happen before where they threaten to leave at negative five. So it starts at six, so at least you get a little bit of a bonus, but not. Not great. Shapeshifter trait. Minus 25% chance of spy missions being detected and minus turn, two turns to set up spy missions. So actually, combined with our Sulak bonuses, it would be very thematic for us to hire Lord Matt Josh the Wanderer as a kind of an expert spy for us. So I would like to try to do that. We're going to have a number of turns to get our money up to hire. So you can also do the ruins for us and can do some deep cover 
spying on our opponents. So we'll come back to you. All right, space culture level up. What are our options here? You can terraform uplifted worlds at plus 30 BC per colony on uplifted worlds. So that's eco level three. We're not working eco that heavily yet, so we don't need that one quite yet. Plus 50% terraforming on empire. That's not um, not a bad thing at all, but we're not terraforming right now. So we're kind of we've kind of looked at all of our tier two options, and none of them really are required right now for anything we're doing. So we kind of want to see what we want for tier three. We get a chance to get a smuggler leader and a pirate leader. Smugglers actually can get you bonus money from your strategic resources, so I'm kind of thinking we might want to go for that to get a smuggler leader. This actually gives us two free random techs, so uh, certainly not a bad choice at all to work towards that. But I think I'm going to go with Master Geologist for future use and aim for the space... Uh, sorry, not that one, the Astro Mining Guild. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, and we're getting, I mean, we're still getting them at a decent clip. 15 turns is not that far off to get the next one. They will start, they do start taking longer and longer, so. Um, all right, I think I'm happy with this right now. We'll be able to fix our income problem momentarily. Got advanced knowledge here, medium G, ultra rich. There's a gas giant there. Let's just keep digging into that. We'll go ahead with that as well. build an outpost. Oh, all right, we're at two now. We can see that it, the text that it's unlocked there is a reminder there, and you can see what you're importing, exporting, and what you're getting from Galactic Wonders there. Okay, our other outpost ship will arrive shortly. We've got trade goods, just so we can prop that up. Infrastructure and infrastructure. Okay. Don't worry, we're going to be lustful soon, everybody. I know you're all anxious to see it. <laughs> uh, plus 50% popular. Yes, we want to start building that. Okay, so let's get that fusion production. Commerce isn't going to help us right now because we don't have any trade treaties. So We may look at getting a trade treaty later. Let's get our income back in the positive because we don't care about... I mean, we do want that, but right now we need to get some stuff built. We're going to focus on growth. Let's get the cloning facility. Go ahead and throw economic capital after that. So we got four turns there. How long on a cloning facility here? Three turns. And here at Shaloth, we can get one in nine turns. I want to get that infrastructure, so let's do like that. Hopefully we can get it faster than that at Shaloth, but um, we'll see what we can do. Here's our infrastructure specialization here. So maybe to get the cloning facility faster, we put one point here. We're going to have three, six. We could still afford to get a couple here. Let's go with that. That'll help us out. Yeah, it's six turns. Okay, that's fine. We can build an outpost. Yes. Now we're up to four. We've got our cloning facilities set everywhere. We're building up a little bit of income, and we have 16 missions to get 125 BC. We're going to need it faster than that to get. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can do it. Let's do that. We'll just put research kind of on the back burner for the moment. Uh, I didn't read Sierra's uh, text when we hired her. I just realized that, so let me read it real quick. A youthful, up-and-coming Nova administrator, Sierra has a buoyant and infectious personality. What she lacks in experience is more than compensated by her enthusiasm and charm. A firm believer in the Great Project. I wonder what that is. Sierra is a pacifist by nature and believes all war is wasteful and foolish. Her idealistic philosophy may be quite uplifting during times of peace, but there are concerns as to her effectiveness during times of war. Sierra's relative inexperience means she is willing to work for a reasonable price, but so far she has found it difficult to gain a position of authority. Well, she's got one in our kingdom, and we're happy to have her. So, and we are not a war. We we are love makers, as we see here, not uh, not not war mongers. All right, let's just continue down our path. We've got nothing to do except wait. We could actually, hmm, we could scrap one of our frigates to get the money to hire Lord Matt Josh right now. Uh, 
we give a flexibility of being able to mm, scout as well, but and we also make ourselves weaker in a position of compared to the AI, they might be more aggressive towards us, but I'm gonna scrap this for 210 BC. Perhaps it's risky, but I think it'll pay off. We're gonna hire Lord Matt Josh now. We're gonna assign him to our other one. It'll take him five turns. Cloning facility finished here. With that done, we're gonna go full on pop growth. Well, we've got, yeah, let's do that. We'll finish there in a second. Okay, what do we got going on? Sierra leveled up. We had a pop growth in Gladys 1. Economic capital next. Okay. Oh, I should, probably should have showed the uh, building there. There's the cloning facility next to our robotic factory. So again, all the buildings do show up on the map. Pop growth, nothing to report out here. Continue. Sierra's leveled up. So whenever a leader levels up, you're allowed to pick. You're always gonna get one, uh, one of these that you are able to increase. And then they're also going to get an additional either level up to one of their existing secondary skills or a new sec secondary skill. Let's go ahead and Let's see. We're not doing that, and warfare is not her, not her bag, uh, as she said. So I am. I go labor often. That's a one that I really like. But I'm going to go administration because we're going to put our economic capital here, and we need the money. All right. And now here's where we've got choice of secondary skills. You can see neither one of these is uh, something we have right now. So it's going to be brand new at the basic level. Plus five percent trade treaties revenue. So if we do some diplomacy and get some trade treaties going, that would be beneficial for that. And spiritual leader, which is plus 5% morale in the system. I'm a big fan of morale, so I'm going to go with that. We've got another leader that showed up, Luther Kataki, the boss. I'll hover over his description if you want to read it. I'll give you just a second here if you want to pause and look at that. Okay, ship leader. So we're very familiar at this point with all these things. We can see his cost, 75 and 2 BC a turn. He's got the quick trait, which we saw on uh, Zeroff, I believe, earlier, and a basic repair, uh, sorry, engineer skill, which is minus one to ship energy overload cooldown. That's not going to mean anything to you right now if you've never watched anything to do with Interstellar Space Genesis, but there is this, an ability, there are some cooldown based abilities we can use in the turn based combat to temporarily increase our damage or defenses or movement speed, and this guy basically can use those more often, but right now I don't really need that we've already got a couple of leaders working for us so we're just gonna pass on that right. it's probably gonna be a good time to end the session here I think in just a moment let's go ahead and get our cloning facility finished and we'll probably activate our lust on the next turn I think that makes the most sense for us all right, we've got a couple of things, though, before we're going to be able to do that, it looks like. We found another source of helium-3, another plus two. So we're out of outpost ships from our free space culture choice, but we're definitely inclined to make another one now. I'm actually going to just queue one up as a reminder that we want to have one because we're going to get that tech, and that's going to be very valuable to us. We've gotten a full... So we now know this is a medium G ultra rich ideal. Okay. And we're done exploring there. So let's pick another area to explore. Let's get over here because I'd like to know if they're going to hit us from a surprise planet. And here's another galactic event. These, uh, I believe, come about from remote exploration. The sentient asteroid. Excellency, our latest full scan of Sector 5-1 has discovered an unusual object that is worthy of your attention near the Rohini system. The Deep Space team did the usual procedures, which involved sending a small recon team to the site to get extra data. Nothing unexpected was found, and they cataloged the object as a simple asteroid of small size, not an unusual find in interstellar space. However, on a second look, the team was quite surprised to start getting strange readings from the object. It has changed form and now appears to be a beacon of some sort, 
as it keeps repeating the same message over and over. After studying the message for a while, the team thinks that the message may be some kind of warning or a positional signal from an unknown galactic navigation system of some kind. Frankly, it could be anything. The interesting and bizarre part is that the inner parts of the probe seem to be made of protonic matter, a forbidden experimental substance, as you know. What should we do with it, sir? So, something doesn't feel right to me. Destroy the object at once as I've got other more interesting matters to attend and already had my fair share of problems for one day. We can't do the middle option because we don't have 250 BC. It's grayed out. And our other option is, wow, what a find. That significant amount of protonic matter alone surely justifies an expedition to retrieve the object and to bring it back to the nearest colony to be dismantled and sold in the black market for a hefty price. Of course, this conversation never took place. So we get 500 to our reserves and minus 10% morale for 10 turns. There's a 25% chance of that. I think we could suffer minus 10% morale for 10 turns to get 500 to our reserves, even as important as I said morale was. Let's go with that. Hopefully there will be no other consequences of that choice <laughs> that's uh, not explained there. Because we're certainly doing some risky business. All right, we'll go one more turn. Get our cloning last cloning facility up. There it is. Uh, uh oh, what's this about? <laughs> um, okay, Zeroth's about to leave. The militia. Emperor, we have just received an interesting proposal from a citizen's militia. Okay, this does not appear to be related, related to our last event. These militants have expressed a desire to join our navy, citing fears of alien expansion and the needs for our species to protect our own. Normally, we don't take such groups seriously. However, this organization is very large, have access to serious hardware, and seem sincere in their desire to assist us. How should we use them, sire? We won't turn away honest patriots, and our navy always needs more resources and personnel. That's plus three ship support points. Okay. Designate them as a separate support unit. Fund them, give them proper training, and ask them... Ask that they arrange for the necessary support equipment and ships for the job. Minus 300 BC, free support ship. Okay, that's nice. There's enough of these militants to man a full cruiser. Ask if they could retrofit one of their capitals to be capital ships to be a cruiser. We could supply them with the money, train them to fly it, and give them enough indoctrination to follow orders. Having a cruiser right now would definitely keep the enemies off our back, and we just got 500 from our uh, risky business with that uh, sentient asteroid. So, yeah, let's go for the free cruiser. Let's not lift a gift, uh, look a gift horse in the mouth here. Here it is. Uh, wow. Okay, the weaponry is really weak on it, lasers. But uh, maybe we can refit this, and uh, at least it's still a cruiser. So uh, I think they might have overstated their abilities to us. I'm not sure. All right, I think this is a good stopping point. We've got a lot done this session. We've gone uh, quite a number of turns, and we are about to activate our lust and start growing our population really quickly in the next part. So... Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you soon.